Uh, here's another number you might want to jot down, keep it on the fridge or something. 877 215 8336, 877-215-8336. Again, 215-8336. That is the state coronavirus hotline, and that is the number that you should call if you're feeling sick. Got a fever, got a dry cough, got shortness of breath, stuff like that, got a question, call that number. It's the state coronavirus hotline, state health department. Set that up, 877-215-8336. As I mentioned a moment ago, every evening at 6, from 6 until 7, we're doing a show called Coping with Coronavirus. Russell Mills is hosting it for us. And the majority of the show is your calls, your questions, and uh, the answers that we can provide. And uh, here's one of them that Russell got last night that I think a lot of people, the, the caller shares the sentiments of a lot of folks. We have Chris from Tulsa on the line. Chris, uh, thank you for calling Coping with Coronavirus here on KRMG. I'm Russell. What can I do for you? I think we've lost our collective minds. <laughs> I can't believe the reaction we're doing. Worldwide, we've, the coronavirus has killed a little over 6,000 people. In a population of 1.4 billion in China, 3,000. So we've shut down the entire United States. How does that make sense to anybody? It is a, a simple matter of math uh, with this particular virus, and there's a really cool map you can look at. It's Johns Hopkins University. Google that, Hopkins c- coronavirus. It'll it'll pop up, and you can see how this thing is uh, evenly distributed across the entire North American continent. I, you know, I'm not personally all that concerned with what's going on in South Korea or China. I, you know, wish them all the best. I'm worried about what's going on in Tulsa and Bixby and Broken Arrow and, you know, my friends and relatives here in the States. And I will tell you that, uh, yeah, this is really going to suck. But if we just let the thing go unchecked and let our hospital beds start overflowing, what happens then is people with other problems, because car wrecks are still going to happen, shootings are still going to happen, bad stuff is still going to happen. And if there's no hospital beds, what happens to those people? It's not just the people who might die from coronavirus. It's the people who might die because they don't have a hospital bed uh, because they're all full. So, I mean... (laughs) I totally understand the frustration, sir, and, and, and the thought that this might be a big overreaction, but I guess I'm thinking maybe belt and suspenders in this case, and I think that's what our president's thinking. I think that's what our, our governor is thinking. The uh, gentleman at the beginning of that mentioned China, and, and one of the things that you have to remember is to fight the disease when it finally really fully bloomed in China, they had to take over hotels build hospitals in a matter of a month or so um, they had to do extraordinary things in terms of uh, finding places for coronavirus patients because the hospitals immediately got overwhelmed and that's really what this is about it's you've heard it before flattening the curve if we can spread the infections out over time instead of having them all happen at once that means the emergency rooms the hospital beds the intensive care units will not fill to capacity and beyond, and there'll be room for patients with other life-threatening problems. That really is a situation. It is not the mortality rates, not the fatalities. It is how quickly this disease overwhelms the medical system and what that means for everybody else. 515 on the KRMG Morning News.